everyone, welcome to another pre-recorded video under stoichiometry. So this is General Chemistry 1, and this pre-recorded video will all be about the mole concept. So I know that we have discussed this one already during our synchronous discussion, but I provided a pre-recorded video so that if you did not understand this one during your synchronous discussion, our synchronous discussion, you can just go back to this video and you can... Um, a study what is the mole concept and the process that we are going to use for you to be able to compute the or, or solve for a certain problem. So let's start. So one of the important things that you need to know about mole concept is that our goal is actually to change a certain mass, a gram, into a mole or we are looking for the grams given that you have a mole of a certain substance. Please to remember that mole is actually the unit that we are going to use uh, in describing or determining the amount of substance uh, that is present in a certain substance. And of course, we also have here grams to moles into atoms. Okay, and so on and so forth. So... Um, the first thing that you need to know is that we have the what we call the Avogadro's number. So um, please memorize what is an Avogadro's number, especially the number that will be involved because um, this will uh, this will be uh, you're going to have a lot of problems that involve uh, Avogadro's number um, in the next uh, topics that we will be having. So, remember that in every one mole of a particular substance, there are 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms, molecules, or ions. Bakit po siya nakalagay na atoms or molecules or ions? Because it actually depends on what is your given. So, if your given is like, for example, Fe, then that means that is the atoms. When you say H2O, then that means water. And because water is a molecule, then that would be under molecules. And for ions, well, of course, these are now the charge, um, the charge ions. Okay, it could be a cation or it could be an anion. Another thing that is very important for the mole concept is the molar mass. If you don't know how to compute for the molar mass, kindly watch the first video about the stoichiometry series for you to be able to know how to compute for the molar mass. Why? Because um, this is very much uh, needed, especially in this um, in the mole concept. Okay, let's have a sample problem that involves a uh, mole concept. So in here, our first problem how many moles are there in 34.5 grams of carbon dioxide? So technically, you are given with a 34.5 grams of carbon dioxide. And what we are looking for here are the number of moles present in carbon dioxide. And remember, when you say moles, it's the amount of substance that is present in carbon dioxide. So, um, the first thing that you need to do is to identify what are your given and of course, what are your unknown? So you are given with 34.5 grams of carbon dioxide and you were actually asked for how many moles of carbon dioxide are there? So this is our problem now. We need to identify the number of moles of your carbon dioxide. Since this is a mole concept, the next thing that you need to do is to compute for the molar mass of the substance that is given in the problem. And in this case, it's carbon dioxide. So solving for the molar mass of your carbon dioxide, first step, to identify what are your elements, that's carbon and oxygen. Identify how many atoms, that's one and two respectively. Then identify their molar masses, can you get your periodic table, and look for the molar masses of carbon and oxygen. So for carbon, that's 12.011 grams per mole. And for your oxygen, that is 15.999 grams per mole. Acquire their product, then you'll get 12.011 grams per mole and 31.998 grams per mole. 
In here, all you have to do is to add everything. Then you will get an answer of 44.009 grams per mole. This is the molar mass of your carbon dioxide. Why is it required for you to have the molar mass of your carbon dioxide? Because it will be needed for you to convert a certain grams into the number of moles of your carbon dioxide. So all you have to do is to write the given, that is 34.5 grams carbon dioxide. Multiply it now with a conversion factor, and this conversion factor should contain units, okay, of the given and the unknown. So just make sure na kung ano yung unit mo dito sa numerator, that will be the unit in your denominator, that will be grams of carbon dioxide. The goal here is, of course, for you to cancel that unit. And what is asked in the problem? The asked problem is moles. Can we directly change a gram into mole? Yes, because we actually have the what we call molar mass. And molar mass is defined as grams per mole. So we have actually that kind of unit wherein you can just directly change a grams into moles. So in every one mole of your carbon dioxide, of course, we know that there is 44.009 grams, and we identify that one by solving for the molar mass of your carbon dioxide. All you have to do is to divide the number 34.5 and 44.009. Then you will get an answer of 0 0.784 mole of carbon dioxide. Why is it 0 0.784? Because you need three significant figures because your given has three significant figures as well. So that is how are you going to solve for a problem wherein you are given with the grams of your substance and you were asked for the numbers of moles of those substances. Let's have another problem, which is actually the total opposite of this, uh, the first problem that we have. In here, you were asked how many grams are there in a zero point uh, or is a 0 0.20 mole of NaCl. So you are given with a mole. So let's identify what is your given and what is your unknown. So your given is 0 0.520 mole of your sodium chloride and you were asked how many grams of your sodium chloride are there so it's actually the total opposite of the first one so the next step is for you of course since this is small concept to solve for the molar mass molar mass of your sodium chloride why because of course um you were asked for the number of grams given with a mole, so we know that uh, your molar mass has a unit of grams per mole, so we can just actually directly multiply or divide the value that we have here with the molar mass of your sodium chloride. So let's compute for the molar mass of your sodium chloride. First, list down the elements that are involved in the process. So you have Na1. For chlorine, you also have 1. Multiply them now by the molar masses. You have 22.990. Then you have 15.999 for the... i sorry. For chlorine, it's 35.5. I'm sorry for that. That's 35.45 grams per mole. Grams per mole. Then you now have 22.990 grams per mole. Then this will be 35.45 grams per mole. All you have to do now is to add the products. Then you will get 58.44 grams per mole. Now you already have the molar mass of your sodium chloride. Next step is to identify how many grams of sodium chloride are there in a 0 0.520 mole of sodium chloride. So you are given with a 0 0.520 mole of your sodium chloride. Again, in multiplying it with a conversion factor, make sure that the unit that you have here in your numerator should be in the denominator of your conversion factor for you to assure that it will be cancelled out. So you can now cancel. So we know that in every one mole of your sodium chloride, the molar mass is 58.44 grams of sodium chloride. So we now have the unit gram, so we can just directly solve for it. So you will now have an answer of 
70.4 grams of sodium chloride. So, 70.4 sodium uh, grams of sodium chloride has three significant figures because you're given as well has three significant figures. So, this is how are you going to compute for the number of grams of a certain substance given the number of moles of a certain substance. Last problem in this pre-recorded video. So, in this problem, you are given with the number of mole, which is 0 0.450 mole of iron, and you were asked how many atoms are there in 0 0.450 mole of iron. So, first step, it's just the same with the previous problems to identify what are your given and what is, what is your unknown. So, we know that we are given with a 0 0.450 mole of iron, and you were asked how many atoms of iron are there. So, technically, what we know is that um, in a mole fraction, we are changing a grams to mole, mole to grams. We also have mole to atoms, mole to ions, and mole to molecules. And we know that if you were asking for the moles, uh, for the atoms rather, you are going to use the Avogadro's number, which is in every one mole of a certain a substance, it could be either a molecule, an atom, an ion, and every one mole of that, you have 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms, could be atoms, slash ions, or it could also be molecules. In this case, because our given is iron and it is just an element, that means we are asked how many atoms are there. So we are going to use atoms. So we can now just directly solve for that. You have 0 0.450 mole of your iron and you were asked how many atoms are there. So you, all you have to do is to multiply it with a conversion factor. So make sure that what you have here in the numerator will be in your denominator here to make sure that you cancel out the unit. And of course, you have atoms of iron here in the numerator because it's the unknown. And you have 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms in every one mole of your iron. And if you're going to multiply that one, you will get an answer of 2.71 times 10 raised to 23 atoms of iron. There, you can box your final answer because your answer now contains three significant figures as well as the given, which is 0 0.450 moles. There will also be problems wherein you are only given with the grams and you were asked for how many atoms are there. So that would be the last problem that we will have in this pre-recorded video. So hindi pala ito. May another, my last problem pa pala. So the next problem will involve a two-step process. So um, as you can see, from our first problem, second, and the third problem, it actually just involved one step that means we only use one conversion factor. For the next problem, or for our last problem in this pre-recorded video, it will take us two conversion units for us to arrive with the correct answer. So this is now our last problem involving mole concept for this pre-recorded video. So you were asked, if you are given with a 1.23 grams of chlorine, how many atoms are there? Okay, so of course, it's just the same with the other problems. You have to identify what are your given and of course, what is your unknown. So we know that you are given with 1.23 grams of chlorine and you were asked how many atoms of chlorine are there. Okay, so our goal here is to convert your grams into atoms. So that means in converting grams, of course, we cannot directly convert grams into atoms. That means we need to convert your grams first into the number of mole. And of course, we're going to use now um, that mole for us to solve for the number of atoms. That's why I told you um, a while ago that this will involve two conversion factors. So let's start now. The next one is to identify what is the molar mass of your involved substance. In this case, it's chlorine. So we know that chlorine has a molar mass of 35.45 grams per mole. 
Okay. So, next step is to use our given noun, we have 1.23 grams of your chlorine. Of course, in multiplying with a conversion factor, again, you have to make sure that your unit will be in the denominator for you to be able to cancel the gaps. So you have now 35.45 grams of chlorine in every one mole of your chlorine. Now you have the moles. The next step is to identify in that particular mole, okay, how many atoms are there. So we could actually use... Avogadro's number because we know that in every one mole of anything, of any substance, of any molecule, ions, or atoms, there are always 6.022 times 10 raised to 23 atoms. In this case, it's atoms because we have an element, chlorine. So, atoms of, so, uh, of chlorine. So, you can now cancel the mole and you can now just directly solve for the value. Just please make sure that you know how to write this one in your calculator because there are cases wherein ang magkakamali kayo, magkakamali kayo sa exponent niya. So the answer here would be 2.09 times 10 raised to 22 atoms of chlorine. Or you can just simply write 2.09 times 10 raised to 22 chlorine atoms. Okay, pwede rin po yan. I'll just write it down here below. So you have 2.09 times 10 raised to 22 chlorine atoms. And of course, either, um, either answer is accepted. There you have it. And that is the last problem. So, let's wrap up everything. So, this is now the summary of the mole concept. So, ito lang yung tatandaan yun na summary um, uh, involving mole concept. Kasi, personally, ito lang yung tinatandaan ko. So, take for example, you have a grams. Okay? You are changing it to moles. Okay? And you are changing it to atoms. It could be either atoms, ions, or molecules in this case. Okay? So, that's it. Um, ito lang yung tatandaan nyo lagi na parang pagkakasunod-sunod. Grams, mole, atoms. So, if you are, if you have grams and if you want to change that grams into mole or if you were asked to change it into moles, all you have to do is to actually divide it with the molar mass. If you're going to have a mole and you want to convert it into atoms, all you have to do is to multiply it with the Avogadro's number. Now, kapag pabaliktad naman, of course, the unit will change. Or, sorry, the operation will change. If you are changing the number of atoms into mole, all you have to do is to divide it with the Avogadro's number. And you, if you have a mole, you want to change it into grams, then all you have to do is to multiply it with the molar mass. So, that is the kind of summary that I can share with you guys. So, I hope that this pre-recorded video will help you in solving some related problems involving mole concept. So that would be all in this pre-recorded video. I hope that you learned something. So see you in the next one.